Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Megan and today is going to be my December wrap up. Now, as I discussed in my 2020 resolutions, I will be transitioning into recently read videos and instead of doing monthly wrap ups from now on, I will be doing a recently read review every time I reach 10 books completed and this will probably be my last monthly wrap-up for quite some time, but this is December 2019 monthly wrap-up. I read quite a few books. I'm really proud of what I achieved in December, so let's just jump on in. So the first book I completed was The Maryland Handbook by Mike Evans. This was a very complex, not really, book. It's a lot of pictures, and the little bit of text it does contain about Marilyn was very repetitive, so it was more of a two or three stars for me. I think I gave it two stars. But this was the last Marilyn Monroe book from my Marilyn Monroe collection, so now I can unhaul it and feel complete and like I actually read something. But I'm relieved to no longer have any Marilyn Monroe handbooks anymore. I really, really love her and I'm very fascinated by her, but there's only so much you can learn about a singular person without getting a little crazy, I feel. So if I ever feel like I need to look up something about Marilyn again, I will just Google it instead of reading another biography. <laughs> and honestly, I forget what order I read these books in for all of the month of December. They just kind of got all scrambled throughout December. So I'm just gonna kind of pull from the pile here. But I did read the Summer series by Jenny Han. This includes The Summer I Turned Pretty, It's Not Summer Without You, and then We'll Always Have Summer. I don't really know how I feel about this series. I saw this book at the library and I fell in love with the cover, so I was so obsessed. I actually, if you followed along, started with It's Not Summer Without You because I owned the book and so I picked it up and I was really confused and then I realized it was the sequel, so that's why I was confused. I ended up giving The Summer I Turned Pretty three stars. It's Not Summer Without You, like 3.5 stars, and then We'll Always Have Summer, 3 stars. The second book was my favorite. I think she ended up with the correct person in the second book, and then overall I don't like who she ended up with or how the story went. So, yeah. But essentially it tells the story of Belly, or Isabel, who is a girl that has grown up going to this summer house in Cousins with her mom and her mom's best friend and their family and in that family has two brothers and it's kind of their love triangle and it's a huge love triangle throughout the whole series and I just don't think she ended up with the right person but that's just my opinion. Next I read Alran High School Host Club Volume 8. I ended up giving this one three stars. I was enjoying the past couple ones because it was more of a storyline but this went back to the short story kind of format it started with in the beginning of the series so that was a little disappointing to revert back to the old ways but I do plan to finish the series because I'm already almost halfway through and they aren't very hard reads and they up my reading challenge score so I'm not mad about it they're still enjoyable they're just not my favorite. Next, I completed Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander. This was one of my prompts for the Magical Readathon Winter Edition, and I will get to like other ones I had in here, but it was pretty enjoyable. It's really fascinating how J.K. Rowling created such a world that she can even create textbooks that are enjoyable and entertaining from the world, and I loved the little annotations from Harry and Ron, and it was just a really cute little series. And it just makes me really, really want the hardback Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them illustrated edition because I want to learn more about these creatures and I would definitely be in the Care of Magical Creatures realm of the wizarding world. <laughs> Next, I read Too Much Is Not Enough by Andrew Rannells. This was an audiobook I got off my Libby app from the library. And this is a biography by Andrew Rannells, of course, because author and he is a Broadway actor if you are unfamiliar with him he was famous for his role in the Book of Mormon and he had a really interesting perspective going into theater because he didn't really grow up getting famous or like getting really good roles or anything like that and it was interesting to see his kind of journey throughout it all and I'm a theater kid myself so I was really enjoying those aspects. There was a few aspects about the book that weren't really my favorite but um, I can understand how other people would find it appealing 
So I ended up giving the book four stars. Next, I read With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. This tells the story of Imoni, who has a child in high school, and during this journey, she is deciding whether to follow her own dreams or be responsible and how to balance that life. But I really, really, really love the romance in this. I think this was a fantastic romance read. And if more contemporaries were like this, or like A Very Large Expanse of Sea by Tahara Mafi. I would definitely read contemporaries all the time. And I gave this one five stars. Next, I read Sky in the Deep by Adrienne Young. As you know, this was number eight on my top 15 of 2019. It really took me by surprise and I was really in love with it. It tells the story of Aelin who believes her brother was killed in war as she was fighting alongside him. And one day she goes back out to war to like seek revenge against the people who killed her brother and she actually goes up against her brother in the war and realizes that he is now on the other side and kind of transferred to the other side and she gets kidnapped by his family and learns more about their culture and what makes them them and that maybe not the other side isn't as bad as they seem. I absolutely gave this one five out of five stars. Next, I read the Dragon Ball 3-in-1 volumes 10, 11, and 12. I have been really enjoying reading this series. As you all know, I've been reading this um, to understand Dragon Ball more, just so I can discuss it with my boyfriend Anthony. Anthony loves, loves, loves the series. He grew up with it as a child. So I've been reading the manga, but we've also been watching the TV series. So I'm almost caught up to where I am in the manga, so I gotta... I'm trying to keep pace with both sides. I believe I gave 10 a 4 star and then the other two a 3 star if I remember correctly or maybe 10 a 5 star and the other two a 4 star but I know 10 was above the other two but I'm still really enjoying the series. Next I read An Abundance of Catherines by John Green. This tells the story of a boy named Colin who has only ever dated girls named Catherine. He's a bit of a genius and he loves anagramming and yeah he's just trying to break that curse so that's pretty much what the story is about. It was okay, definitely not like my favorite book at all. Um, I got through it though and I'm gonna give it three stars. Next, I read Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. This is the first book in the Grishaverse trilogy and is really what you should start with if you're going to read the whole Grishaverse, which includes the Grishaverse trilogy, the Six of Crows duology, and then the King of Scars duology. So this was a really fun read. As you all know, Six of Crows is like the best book ever in my opinion. And this was fun to go back and read this. I wish I had started with this, but... I really don't understand why people don't like it. I loved it so much. It tells the story of Lena who is an orphan and finds out she is actually a powerful sun summoner which is a very rare gift and she then has to kind of save the world. <laughs> and I gave this one five out of five stars. Next I read Birthday by Meredith Russo. This tells the story of Eric and Morgan who were born in the same hospital on the same day and then we're stuck in a snowstorm together on that day so their families got really close and they've grown up as best friends. However, Morgan has a secret and Morgan feels like she is supposed to be a girl so therefore she's like transitioning and figuring out her life. It tells the story through both Eric and Morgan's perspective which is really interesting and throws in snippets from each of their birthdays starting at I think 11 all the way up to 18 and it's kind of their friendship story that kind of progresses into a love story which is really really interesting to follow and I thought it was a really great book however I'm not a huge like contemporary romance person so it only was a four star for me. Next, I read Winterwood by Shane Earnshaw, which tells the story of Nora Walker, who is a witch with the ability to kind of go into the Winterwood. And in the Winterwood, there are a ton of lost things, and one day she finds a boy in the woods. This boy is from the reformatory camp, very close to where Nora lives, and one day at the reformatory camp, Nora hears that a boy has died and a boy has gone missing, so she's kind of investigating what happened with that. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars and it was in my top 15 of 2019. Next I read the audiobook for Return of the Isle of the Lost. This is the second book in the Disney Descendants series 
And if you don't know, this series is very interesting in that you read a book, then watch a movie, then read a book, then watch a movie, rather than read the books and then the movies are adaptations of the books. The books and the movies kind of play into the same series and fill in where the other leaves off, which is really cool. And I'm super excited that I finished this because I'm now going to go watch Descendants 2, the movie, and then continue on with that. And I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. Next, I read Someone Like You by Sarah Dessen, and I also read Along for the Ride by Sarah Dessen. Both of these have a trope of love interest with a dead friend, so I liked Along for the Ride more. Someone Like You had some twists that I was not expecting, but I think were interesting to read. However, both of these books, I'm again just not a fan of like I used to be so they were three stars for me. Along for the Ride tells the story of a girl who goes to the summer house of her father after her parents get divorced and she is in this summer like beach area and just learning to be girly. It had a lot of like I'm not like other girls trope and girls are dumb if they like pink trope and I was really really hating it. They did kind of go back on their word and change their mind and like show that girls can be more than just pink but almost three quarters of the book were just bashing on a girl for liking the color pink or like for being girly and I really hated that and then this one had a pregnant friend so it was like dealing with those kind of issues so this one was better as far as like representation and learning but this one was better at entertainment wise so I don't know they're both just not my favorite so yeah next I read Dancing Through Life by Candace Cameron Burr if you don't know her she is DJ Tanner and Full House and this is her story on the behind the scenes of Dancing with the Stars when she was featured on that show she is a Christian and this is kind of a Christian style book but I firmly am like with Candace on how she views religion and that um, you're happy to talk about it and you believe in God and believe in Jesus but you're not going to shove it down other people's throats um, and we just had a lot of the same views on religion which I really liked but it also had really really good life lessons like eating healthy and being modest not in the sense of like covering up but rather than like uh, not being conceited and giving back and those kind of things and she just explained things really well and I really really enjoyed this biography. I don't think I will be keeping the physical copy. I might let my mom read it. I think she'll like it but I do want to read more of her work and I gave this one four out of five stars. Next, I read The Raven and Other Tales by Edgar Allan Poe. I ended up giving this graphic novel three stars just because I've never read Edgar Allan Poe's work before and I thought the graphic novel format was going to be interesting and in that I would retain what was being said and learn about his work, but rather it was really confusing to follow and I think you have to know his work to read the graphic novel, so I don't think I'll be keeping this. And lastly, I read To Best the Boys by Mary Weber. This was one of my most anticipated books of 2019. However, it kind of felt a little bit flat for me. It was very, very slow and hard to get into. It didn't really pick up until page like 175 of almost 300. But once we got into the actual maze portion and the action portion, it was enjoyable. So I ended up giving it 4 out of 5 stars. So those are the books I read in December. Please let me know what you read in December and what your favorite book of December was and I will check in with you guys in my next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye friends.